As in civil engineer, sometimes we need different types of concrete with different properties. How do we decide what concrete we need in any particular case? The required properties of hardened concrete are specified by the designer and the properties of fresh concrete are governed by the type of construction and by the techniques of placing and transporting. These two sets of requirements make it possible to determine the composition of the mix, taking also account of the degree of control exercised on site. Mixed design can, therefore, be defined as the process of selecting suitable ingredients of concrete and determining their relative quantities with the purpose of producing an economical concrete, which has certain minimum properties, notably workability, strength, and durability. There are several factors that need to be considered before performing the mixed design. First, water cement ratio. Water cement ratio required to produce a given mean compressive strength is best determined from previously established relations for mixes made with the actual ingredients or by carrying out tests using trial mixes made with the actual ingredients to be used in the construction. Second, types of cement. The choice of the type of cement depends upon the required rate of strength development, on the likelihood of chemical attack, and on thermal considerations. Third, workability and water content. So far we have considered the requirements for the concrete to be satisfactory in the hardened state but, as said before, its properties when being handled and placed are equally important. One essential requirement at this stage is a satisfactory workability. Fourth, choice of aggregate. As we stated earlier, in reinforced concrete, the maximum size of aggregate which can be used is governed by the width of the section and the spacing of the reinforcement. With this proviso, it is generally considered desirable to use as large a maximum size of aggregate as possible. However, it should be remembered that the improvement in the properties of concrete with an increase in the size of aggregate does not extend beyond about 40 millimeters. So that use of even larger sizes may not be advantageous. Another important feature of satisfactory aggregate is the uniformity of its grading. In the case of coarse aggregate, this is achieved comparatively easily by the use of separate stockpiles for each size fraction. However, considerable care is required in maintaining the uniformity of grading of fine aggregate, and this is especially important when the water content of the mix is controlled by the mixer operator on the basis of constant workability. Also, an excess of fine aggregate may make full compaction impossible and thus lead to a drop in strength. Fifth, Cement Content in designing a mix, it is sensible to aim at an economic cement content because cement is more expensive than aggregate. Moreover, a moderate cement content confers a technical advantage of a lower cracking potential in the case of mass concrete where the head of hydration needs to be controlled. Lastly, aggregate content. The total aggregate content per unit volume of concrete is obtained by subtracting the sum of the free water content and of the cementitious material content from the wet density of the compacted fresh concrete. The fine aggregate content per unit volume of concrete is then estimated by the relationships of total aggregate content to the free water slash cement ratio for different values of workability, maximum size of aggregate and grading of fine aggregate. By considering all the factors above, one should be able to design a concrete mix with required strength, workability, and durability. What do you think? Leave a comment below.